not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us. That we Strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. And let us join together in the Vente. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let, Let us shout, shout for joy, joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and pray for a loud shout to him with songs. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. In his hands are the caverns of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his for he made it. And his hand has broken the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. And continue together with the Lord's Prayer. For the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures and leads me beside still waters. He receives my soul and guides me along right pathways for his name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You have led me before me in the presence of those who trouble me. You have anointed my head with oil, and my cup is running over. Surely your goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The epistle for this morning is Ephesians 5. Once you were in, you were darkness. But now, in the Lord, you are light. Live as children of light, for the fruit of the light is found in all that is good and right and true. Try to find out what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in the unfruitful work of darkness, but instead expose them. For it is sh shameful even to mention what such people are secretly, but everything exposed by the light becomes visible. For everything that becomes visible is light. Therefore, it, is, it says, sleep, sleeper, awake, rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. As Jesus walked along, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents? that he was born blind. Jesus answered, Neither this man nor his parents sinned. He was born blind so that God's works might be revealed to him. He, <clears throat> we must work the work of him who sent me while it is in his day. Night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, 
I am the light of the world. When he had said this, he spat on the ground and made mud with his saliva and spread the mud on the man's eyes, saying to him, Go, wash in the pool of Shalom, Salom, on the man, which means sent. Then he went and washed and came back, able to see. The neighbors and those who had seen him before as a beggar began to ask, is this not the man who used to sit and beg? Some were saying, it is he. Others were saying, no, but it is someone like him. He kept saying, I am the man. But they kept asking him, then how were your eyes open? He answered, the man called Jesus made mud spread it on my eyes and said to me, go to Siloam and wash. Then I went and washed and received my sight. They said to him, where is he? He said, I do not know. They brought to the Pharisees the man who had formerly been blind. Now, it was the Sabbath day when Jesus made the mud and opened his eyes. Then the Pharisees also began to ask him how he had received his sight. He said to them, he put mud on my eyes. Then I washed, and now I see. Some of the Pharisees said, this man is not from God, for he does not observe the Sabbath. But others said, How can a man who is a sinner perform such signs? And they were divided. So they said again to the blind man, What do you say about him? It was your eyes he opened. He said, He is a prophet. The Jews did not believe that he had been blind and that he had received his sight until they called the parents of the man who had received his sight and asked them, Is this your son, whom you say was born blind? How then does he now see? His parents answered, We know that this is our son, and that he was born blind. But we do not know how it is that now he sees. Nor do we know who opened his eyes. Ask him. He is of age. He will speak for himself. His parents said this because they were afraid of the Jews. For the Jews had already agreed that anyone who confessed Jesus to be the Messiah would be put out of the synagogue. Therefore his parents said, He is of age, ask him. So for the second time, they called the man who had been born blind and said to him, Give glory to God. We know that this man is a sinner. He answered, I do not know whether he is a sinner. One thing I do know, that he... <coughs> thought I was blind, now I see. They said to him, What did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? He answered them, I have told you already, and you were not listening. Why do you want me to hear it again? Do you also want to become his disciple? Then they reviled him, saying, You are his disciple, but we are disciples of Moses. We know that God has spoken to Moses. But as for this man, we do not know where he comes from. The man answered, Here is an astonishing thing. 
You do not know where he comes from, and yet he opened my eyes. We know that God does not listen to sinners, but does listen to the one who worships him and obeys his will. If never since the world began has it been heard that anyone opened the eyes of a person born blind. If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. They answered him, You were born entirely in sins and are trying to testify, teach us. And they drove him out. Jesus heard that they had driven him out. And when he found him, he said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? He answered, And who is he, sir? Tell me so that I may believe in him. Jesus said to him, You have seen him, and the one speaking to you is he. He said, Lord, I believe, and he worshipped him. Jesus said, I came into this world for judgment, so that those who do not see may see, and those who do see may become blind. So of the Pharisees hearing him, heard this and said to him, Surely we are not blind, are we? Jesus said to them, If you were blind, you would not sin. But now that you say, We see, your sin remains. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Come, Holy Spirit, come and speak through me. Let these words be your words. If they are not your words, write your words on our hearts and our minds so that we might always know your voice and hear your call. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. So this morning we have this text of a blind man and we meet him through Jesus coming and seeing him and Jesus cures him. He puts mud on his eyes and tells him to go and wash. And it seems strange that, that people would say, well, who sinned, him or his father or his parents? And, and Jesus says, neither. Well, the reason that that is asked is because at that time, they believed that this, this blindness or any defects of the body come from the fact that either the person or the parent sinned. Now, it seems awfully strange that they would say, was it him or his parents? Because, of course, if he was born blind, he was born that way. So how did he sin? Now, the Pharisees seem to say later it's because... He was born into sin. But the reality is, many of that age and many different faiths, and even today some faiths, believe in this reincarnation. And reincarnation follows you. And so that's part of the reason that they would say that, is because they would believe that it's possible that his sins from a previous life followed him into this one and gave him this defect. But Jesus is saying, no, that this happened so that God's glory could be revealed. And so we have over and over again in Scripture, we have over and over again in examples of Jesus saying, some things happen because it reflects God's glory. I would tend to say God allows some things to happen so that God's glory might be shown. Which is different than saying God makes it happen. God allows things to happen. Just as we've dealt with over and over again. I mean, who would have thought here in 2020 we would be in a place where we are sort of confined? A time when the churches would be empty, not because Christianity's dying, but because we need to self-isolate. 
because we have this disease that is running rampant throughout the world and it's causing us to stay at home and stay away from people. Who could have imagined God wanting this to happen? And that's why I say God didn't want this to happen. It happened because God gives us free will to do what we are going to do. But God wants to turn this around. And if it had not been in this day and this age, we wouldn't be able to come together virtually. We would sort of be gathered or hunkered down in our houses. And I might be able to send you letters or, or phone calls or, or maybe even emails. But today, live streaming is easy. Remember the days of the tele evangelists where you had to get on TV and watch them and they had to have this big movie production. But yet today, just by simply having a little phone, we can do this live streaming. We can worship together, though we're not in person, not, not all gathered together, but we are gathered together just as we understand in our Anglican communion that we worship together even though we're worshiping in separate languages, different places, different times, we are still performing one worship because we follow this one book. This book of common prayer that if you understand it, references the Bible in so many ways. I, I can't remember the percentage of the, the book of common prayer that is actually biblically quoting, but it's pretty close to most of it. I would say, if I got my numbers right, somewhere around 80% of it comes in some way or another from the Bible. But we are facing this coronavirus, this virus that has put us to separate ourselves from each other. But don't let this be the work of anything that would hold us back. Don't let the sins of the world or Satan or the devil or however you look at this be the winner in this. We do have to sort of keep our distance. We do sort of have to be on our own, but we don't have to not be together at the same time. The church doors to the building may be closed, but we as a church still gather. So look at this coronavirus as an opportunity to understand that God is doing something even different. God's glory is going to show through this because nothing can stop the light that Jesus showed to this blind man and to us. That nothing can stop what God has planned for us. I remember this meme that I saw just the other day and I know I won't quote it right either, but it was something to the extent that there are no concerts, no ball games, no school, no, no gathering. Now that I've cleared your schedule, can you eat talk? God. This may be an opportunity for us to find God in a different way. This clearing of our schedule to make time for God. And I would ask you, in this time of this virus, this time when we are so anxious and we live in, in such uncertain times, will you find time to talk to God again? Will you find time to look at the examples of the miracles that Jesus performed regularly? Will you open yourself up to the fact that maybe, just maybe, Jesus has decided there will be a different miracle. A miracle of helping people who live in an age where we are on our phones and texting each other more than we are talking face to face. A time when some young people and maybe some older people sit side by side and text each other instead of actually using words and looking at each other. Maybe this is a miracle of a sort that when this all blows over, we start to realize that being together is a privilege. Being together is important. Having that physical contact and that communication as we, most of us in the church who are older, understand in a different way because we didn't have the technology that we have today. Maybe Jesus is working on a different miracle. 
Maybe Jesus is opening our eyes by creating or allowing this virus to come. Maybe God and Jesus are spreading mud over the earth to open the eyes of all of us to say, I created you to be a community, and you rejected that at some point. And now I want to open your eyes to the joy and the wonders of being face to face and person to person. You see, the scriptures speak to us in all ages. What it might have said to us 20 years ago is not what it says to us today. It's why we have to continue to read and study the scriptures and understanding that the scriptures are alive. The scriptures read and speak to us in our time. So I want us to read this gospel as long as it was. I want us to read it from a different sense. What vision, what way of seeing is Jesus giving us today? What is the mud that Jesus is using to get our attention? Who are those who are standing in the wings and instead of looking for the hope that Jesus brings us, instead is either denying what's going on or is tearing us down? Let us figure out what and how we are going to be together as this virus comes through this nation and the nations around the world. Let us pray that the mud that Jesus had for that blind man is a mud that will come to us in a way that will make this virus go away. Let us pray that the vision that this blind man got back is a vision that we too will get back and understand that God is calling us to be together. God is calling us to be face to face and person to person. God is calling us to be the church again in a way that's much different than maybe we have come to know. Let us go out into the world. Let us be the light that's in the darkness of this time by saying we have not given up hope. We know that Jesus, too, will walk this with us. Jesus does not forsake us. Let us go out into the world and help others see what we see when Jesus opens our eyes. Amen.
let us join together in the song of the Lamb. Splendor and honor and kingly power are yours by right, O Lord our God. For you created everything that is, and by your will they are created and will have their being. And yours by right, O Lord, that was slain. For with our blood you have redeemed for God. From every family, language, people, and nation, a kingdom of priests to serve our God. And so to him who sits upon the throne, and to Christ the Lamb, be worship and praise, dominion and splendor, forever and ever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. And let's join together in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He consented to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern us and uphold us now and always. Day by day we bless you. We praise your name forever. Lord, keep us from all sin today. Have mercy, Have mercy upon us, Lord. Have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy. For we put our trust in you. In you, Lord, is our hope. And we shall never hope in vain. Gracious Father, whose blessed Son, Jesus Christ, came down from heaven to be the true bread which gives life to the world. Evermore, give us this bread, that he may live in us and we in him, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Lord God, almighty and everlasting Father, you have brought us in safety to this new day, Preserve us with your mighty power, that we may not fall into sin, nor be overcome by adversity. And in all we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Heavenly Father, in you we live and move and have our being. We humbly pray you so to guide and govern us by your Holy Spirit, that in all the cares and occupations of our lives, we may not forget you, but may ever remember that we are walking in your sight. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I bid your prayers, petitions, and thanksgivings. We pray for all those on our parish prayer list. For those who are on the front lines, our police.
police, our doctors, our nurses, our EMTs, all our health care workers, all those in retail and food service, all those who are affected in any way by this coronavirus, those who have lost their jobs because of it, those who have been laid off, those who are scared, those who live in fear, all of those that we love and know that need your peace and guidance. We give thanks that you allow us to still come together. Even though it's virtual, it gives us a link to each other. We thank you for allowing that. Oh God, you have made of one blood all the people of the earth and sent your blessed Son to preach peace to those who are all far off and to those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after you and find you. Bring the nations into your fold. Pour out your spirit upon all flesh and hasten the coming of your kingdom through Jesus Christ our Lord. Together in the great thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we pray for your service. service. We thank for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life. But above all, for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ for the means of grace and for the whole of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your grace, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. And continue with the prayer of St. Chrysostom. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in an age to come life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. 